Joseph, you gotta take out the trash. Wait, what's this? New tune support! Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. One of the most rewarding parts about having a YouTube fanbase is the ability to speak directly with my audience about the type of content you would like to see. One of the downsides of this predicament is that all of your ideas are terrible. You all wanted the tune video? Well, you're gonna get the tune video. Presenting tunes. Before we begin, if you are on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll release the forbidden tune that makes the deck tick. Tune Yada Garasu. So here's the list, and honestly, outside of Bitcoin, this has got to be the least efficient use of money on the planet. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the deck breakdowns for the Quarantine series, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's take a look at tunes. Tunes are... One of the stupidest things ever conceived in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! They're a cool little one-off archetype that breaks about 45 fundamental design rules and thus would have been retired, but for one critical mistake. They appeared in DM. And you know what that means. We now have to trickle out support until every single Yugist ceases to purchase product and get excited for next products. If you're unfamiliar with why tunes being meta-relevant would be a disaster, let me clue you in. They have a field spell that prevents them from being destroyed, they have 16 different classifications because of text box limitations during their first wave, they have about 8 non-once-per-turn searchers, most of them have summoning sickness, oh, and they can all attack directly unless your opponent controls two monsters. I'll let you decide what mirrors would look like. Now, thankfully, Konami had the good grace to neglect to print a single playable tune, so it doesn't look like we're in for a 90-turn stalemate while Jeff Jones and Patrick Hoban have a red-eyed stare-down under a kingdom, but that lack of playables does mean we're gonna have problems winning games. I'm doing the best I can here. We're on every playable tune, so, you know, two and a half of them, alongside as many going second tools as we can cram into a single list. Realistically, we're not going to be able to scrape a W unless we get a sweet 6 for 1 off of an evenly matched, and Blinding Second gives us the upside of flexing their single good piece of tune support, Comic Hand, an on-theme Snatch Steel. We're also playing the Red Rock because we're, uh, woefully bereft of any normal summons, and it'll be a cold day in hell before I cave to the likes of Jet Synchron or Alistair. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our tenacious tunes. 3-tune BLS, 3-tune Dark Magician, 2-tune Red Eyes, he sucks but you need a name for page flip, and 1-tune Cyber Dragon. Hilariously, he still makes Mega Fleet. We're also on 3 of the Legendary Rock, and 3 of the Rock of Legend. For spells, we're on 3 Kingdom, 1 Terraforming, 3 TTC, who I'm sure is happy to have a minute away from Royal Magical Library, 3 Bookmark, 3 Page Flip, 3 Comic Hand, 3 Lightning Storm, 3 Extravagance, and finally, 3 Evenly. In the extra, we're on 3 Chimeratech, 3 Big Eye, which hilariously, we can make, 3 Link Haribo, 3 Anima, and 3 Clara. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Tenyi, and ah, how poetic! We're going to begin today with a Battle of the Broken Field Spells. Now, we are a blind second deck, but come on, they're Tenyi! There's no vanities in this hand! Realistically, how set up could they get? Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Blue before making the one the only monk of the Tenyi and firing off a Vessel of the Dragon Cycle. They'll special summon a Mapura from their hand, then go into a Shaman and summon... Oh. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. Okay, they'll activate Mari Mari thrice per turn. Love the wording on this card. <sighs> before activating the Graveyard Effect of Dragon Cycle of Celestial Illusions to get an Ashana to hand, Link summoning a Berserker, specialing the Ashana, and making the Link 4. I have... No idea how we're going to beat that card. 
They'll end with a copy of Flawless Perfection of the Tenny and pass it back to us. For turn we draw a terraforming. We're going to lead with the Toon Bookmark to insulate our eventual Toon Kingdom, which we will find off this terraforming. Afterwards, we'll activate Toon Kingdom and then fire off a Comic Hand. The Maputo will make quick work of that, but unfortunately for our opponents, we have a second. We'll take that Berserker, and now that they have no non-effect monsters on their side of the field, we are free to pop off. We'll BLS that monster and go to the battle phase, clearing their field and ensuring a win. I can't imagine them coming back from this. Then they drew a Vashutta for turn. Okay, they'll activate Vashutta's effect, returning this copy of Comic Hand, and oh no, they once again have a Berserker. They can bring it back with blue, but we can prevent destruction a couple of times using our field spell. We draw a page flip for turn, that's fantastic. We'll summon from our deck another copy of BLS. They draw a couple of cards off Flawless Perfection, we'll Comic Hand, but they drew a Maputa sequencing! Come on! We'll activate BLS. Ah. Yes, now I remember how cards work. Okay, well, our opponent for turn draws a copy of Entities a little bit late. They're going to fire off a Foolish Burial and activate the Graveyard Effect of Vashutta, this time returning our copy of Toon Kingdom correctly to go for a green. They'll go into a Shaman once again, and God, I wish this was once per duel. Mare Mare is going to be able to activate its effect thrice per turn once again, enabling another Link Summon of the four, provided they have a second. And they do. They'll Sasahara our copy of BLS now that they can target it and go to the battle phase, walking over one of our BLSs and destroying the other with this copy of Shaman. Things are looking extremely bad. We have to draw something amazing off the top, and we get it! Let's fire off this copy of Lightning Storm now that our board is clear, destroying all of our opponent's monsters and passing it back to them. For turn, they draw a copy of ooh, Vessel, but that's the wrong send. For turn, we draw... Oh, thank God! We'll normal summon this copy of Blackstone of Legend and eat an Effect Veiler. Well, no big deal, we just need them to fade one draw step, and thankfully they do. Because Effect Veiler can only be activated in the main phase, we have the first crack at activating something, so we'll fire the Blackstone effect to get a copy of Red-Eyes Toon Dragon, and then because they can't target it, we can summon this Dark Magician from our hand, activate its effect to get a copy of Toon Bookmark, which we can activate afterwards for a Comic Hand for following turns. Now, we can't get in this turn because they have Summoning Sickness, so our opponent will get one more shot. They'll go from Ashana into their final copy of Monk, special summoning another Maputa from deck, and then using the effect of Adhara in Graveyard to get the Vashada back to return this copy of Toon Kingdom and normal summon an Effect Veiler. Draco Masters will clear our board, but won't kill us. <sighs> we could still do it. For turn, we draw a copy of Toon Kingdom number three. Are you kidding me? Okay, we can activate the Graveyard Effect of the Rock, then we'll normal summon it. Then I will realize that it's one effect per turn, not each effect per turn, so Link Rebo will have to do. We'll get in with a Toon Draco Masters before passing it back to our opponent, who for turn draws their third copy of Effect Veiler. We should be able to win from this position. Pot of Extravagance off the top, baby, let's go! For turn we draw... Uh, some stuff that might matter. Uh, TTC can find us a copy of Dark Magician, so we'll go to the battle phase, walk into our opponent for a fair amount of damage, then in main phase two, Tribute summon a Toon Dark Magician, activating its effect to summon our remaining copy of Red Eyes Toon from deck. We will win if they can fade one draw step. Our opponent draws FB Goods, they don't have a lot of good targets, and despite setting a card, our monsters can attack directly. Christ, what a first game. I can only hope our second match is a little less exhausting. Our opponent's playing Prank Kids with their newly released Link 1 and soon to be christened Tier 1 status as well. Let's see what they can get started on the play. They're going to lead with a copy of Orpheus Scorpio. You can see they've already drawn the Darling Tony of Cobra, but because they fear God, they play too. After that, they'll activate Cobra's effect to add an instant fusion to hand Link Summon a Cherubini, send a Lampsies, and then instant fusion into a rocket ride with two Prank Kids in Graveyard. That is so cute. From here, they're going to go into a copy of Meow Meow. That's going to trigger the Graveyard Effect of Lampsies and get the Fancies from deck. Next, they'll link summon a copy of Dodo Doodle Do, a card I am absolutely mispronouncing, to get a place to hand and special summon a Dropsies from deck. They'll go into a Bow Wow Bark, triggering the Graveyard Effect of Roxies to get another copy of Dropsies, firing off a place, going into Toad, and setting three. That's pretty strong. For turn, we draw a copy of Blackstone of Judgment. We'll lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, unfortunately not fetching the totally awesome. Fine. They'll activate the effect of Bow Wow Bark at first opportunity. We'll, in battle phase, activate evenly matched, but unfortunately for our opponent, we've drawn two of them. They'll toad back the toad and will respond with an evenly matched in kind, dashing their hopes and firing off a bookmark in main phase two. We'll activate terraforming, to which our opponent will respond with a pandemonium for a battle butler. Now, none of these prank hits have activated their effects, so fancies, dropsies, and lampsies are all going to trigger here, summoning two rocks from deck and I believe a Lampsies as well. Now two of those are the same prank kid. It's possible I can choke my opponent on the same typing. We're going to go from Blackstone of Legend to Red Eyes Toon Dragon. We're going to activate the effect of Page Flip and oh, get Cyber Dragon. We'll activate Red Eyes' effect for DM and DM's effect for BLS, which will prompt an early activation of the Battle Butler. No big deal. We can overlay for Big Eye and take the Errant Lampsies. 
Enjoy your Roxies. Our opponent will link summon a copy of Meow Meow using Roxy's effect to get a Fancies. They'll then go into a Dodal Do Do, triggering the effect of Fancies in Graveyard to get a Lampsies from deck. They're going to add a copy of Place, which they will then activate in order to get another copy of Fancies before making Access Code Talker. Ooh, targeting our Toon Kingdom. Now we can protect the first one with the bookmark in the graveyard, but not the second one, so they will be able to pick apart our board and unfortunately get over our big eye as well. But I have a plan. We're going to activate the Blackstone of Legend of the Graveyard, go to the battle phase, walk over the access code talker, and then make Relinquished Anima! Nice placement, nerd! We'll pass back to our opponent who is shockingly out of threats, the desires down to one card in deck, and... Are we going to win this game by decking our opponent? We're going to set a lightning storm and pass. They draw for turn of polymerization, flip up a fancies, normal summon a Norfolk Scorpio, make a phoenix, but they are nowhere near lethal, and walking over the anima is not enough. For turn, we draw a copy of Nibiru. Too little, too late, but our opponent is out of cards. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Ad Emancipator, so this will be the ultimate test as to whether our deck can blind second. Now, our opponent's list is unconventional, to say the least. I don't know why they're playing Supplier of all things, but let's see what they aim to do. They're going to leave with a copy of Adhara. Next, they're going to Normal Summon 8 <laughs> Supplier. <laughs> Triggering the effect of Supplier in hand and using the Halka Fibrax to go into an O-Lion. They'll activate the effect of Supplier, ooh, for a Guardian, that's pretty cute. Next, they're going to activate the effect of Link Cross to get two tokens to their side of the field, and stop me if you've seen this combo before. Out comes Martial Metal Marcher. Out returns O-Lion. And here's Link Spider. They're going to go into a Union Carrier afterwards, equipping this copy of Supplier with a Block Dragon and making Shooting Riser? What did they just send at the graveyard? Oh boy. Okay, they'll special summon a copy of Researcher from hand and activate its effect, fighting off the top. Blue will do. They'll activate the effect of Crystal Dragite in order to draw a card off the top of their deck and then make, whoa, Raptite and Leonite, bringing back the Dragite and stacking the red crystal to the top of their deck. This list is bananas. They'll special summon the red crystal and then activate its effect? I have no idea what it does. Oh my god, they can stack the signs to the top of the deck, then use Leonite to get the signs to hand. That's unironically good. They'll use Mascarena and Seeker, making Borolode Savage Dragon with the Halka Fibrax equipped. But wait a minute, this is just two negates. I, mean, I can easily beat this. Uh, they'll negate my terraforming and... Wait, what are they doing? Oh. Oh! Okay, yeah, I'm dead. Alright, well, there's nothing I can do to beat this. Uh, we'll fire off an evenly matched and they let it resolve. Oh, fine. Well, in that case, I'll use Comic Hand to take this copy of Appaloosa and then fire off this copy of Page Flip, finding a copy of Toon Dark Magician whose effect I can activate to get a copy of BLS. We might win this one after all. Maybe they didn't hold A. They're going to lead with a copy of Analyzer. I'll negate it. I have all the time in the world. They'll activate Leonite's effect. That's A-OK -okay with me before normal summoning a Guardian and activating Signs. They'll activate the effect of Seeker. I'll negate it. They'll activate Guardian. Oh, but my tunes cannot be destroyed so easily. Now they will get to resolve Seeker, finding off the top... The Red Crystal, I suppose. Next, we're going to special summon a Supplier, which I will negate, and resolve the effect of the Red Crystal. Ending on a Block Dragon, a Leonite which we will negate. I mean, th this doesn't seem very powerful to me until I see the ads off the block dragon. Okay, we might be dead anyway. In main phase two, they're going to activate the effect of a searcher in hand. My Appaloosa is no longer able to negate anything my opponent is doing, so they have free reign over the remainder of the game. With no fear, they'll fire off the effect of Doki Doki going for an analyzer, and they have not yet activated its on-field effect, which is going to be a house. They're going to find off the top of the deck, Oh, nothing! Wow, fantastic break. But they can still summon a copy of Gigantes and make Dragite. Dragite? None of my monsters can be targeted or destroyed! What is Dragite gonna- Oh yeah. That's how that works. Okay, well they'll summon a Weeping Idol, go into this copy of Appaloosa that they just put back in their extra deck, make Block Dragon and pass back to me. I mean, this is looking very bad. Lightning Storm is not going to be able to do anything. We'll activate the effect of Dark Magician, they'll negate it with Appaloosa, then activate the effect of Leonite, bringing back Raptite, and Raptite's effect banishing the BLS we just discarded. I can walk over the Appaloosa, but that's just about all I can do. I'll pass it back to my opponent, they'll switch everything to attack position, activate Leonite's effect. They still have to get over my Dark Magician, and they can't do so uh, by destroying it. I mean, maybe we can Marshmallow our way out of this game? <laughs> they find a Gate Blocker off the top, but elect to go for the Guardian instead. Normal summoning an Analyzer. 
to make the Dragite they put back in the extra deck. Dragite will activate if they find one Rockets enough, and unfortunately for me, they found two. Well, it was a good attempt. So, it's time for game two. I am once again blinding second. I considered going first, but I don't think Red Eye's Toon Dragon Pass is going to win us any games anytime soon. Our opponent's going to lead, just like last time, with a copy of Adhara. They're going to normal summon a copy of Researcher and activate its effect, finding off the top... very little. Well, Doki Doki is good enough. They'll go ahead and link summon a copy of Halka Fibrax afterwards and activate its effect to get a copy of O-Lion from deck. Next, they will activate the effect of Link Cross, summoning two tokens. Here we go again. Next comes the Synchro Summoned Martial Metal Marcher, which will bring back... Oh, they're bringing back the Researcher. Now, why would they do that? They'll go into a Link Spider, a Union Carrier, Special Summon a Gigantes, equip it with a copy of Block Dragon, and make Shooting Riser again. They'll activate the effect of Block Dragon and go into a Crimson Blade Rip! Oh my god, I can't beat that card. Oh my god, I can't beat that card. Oh my god, if they end on one negate, I can't beat that card. Oh my god! No one's playing this in Ad Emancipator! Why did I find the one person on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro that's main decking Naturia Beast? Okay. They'll pass back to us. I, I guess I'll try, evenly matched. This time they will negate it with Herald of the Arclight, and oh, I am just resigned to my fate. M maybe we can <laughs> deck them? <laughs> <sighs> so, we're back with the deck, and yeah, this is pretty much exactly what I expected. Every win was a series of unfortunate events for my opponent in which every single thing that could go wrong did go wrong, and every loss was the most one-sided stomp of all time. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the cards work in a way that's extremely difficult for some decks to interact with. I mean, sometimes the field spell alone is enough to win the game. Two, every hand has the same play. You've always got kingdom access, you've always got a comic hand, and you often have an equalizer to get the ball rolling. And three, you can do your entire play doing the Pegasus voice, which is an amazing plus. And the cons. One, there's not a lot going on in the list. You pray for an equalizer, you resolve kingdom, you hope Snatch Steel is good enough to get there. Games are extremely samey, extremely feast or famine, and basically zero fun. Two, the inconsistencies between the different tunes make for some extremely frustrating gameplay. Sometimes you desperately need the battle phase, but half of them can't attack. Sometimes they're free specials, and sometimes you need to normal them. Keeping track of why each tune sucks is an ordeal in and of itself. And three, even the games you win are because an opponent doesn't have a clean out to kingdom and can't clear a BLS. Sitting behind a huge marshmallow isn't my ideal Yu-Gi-Oh experience. All in all, the deck's expensive and terrible. Like a McChicken draped in gold foil, or an MBT fanny pack. Links are in the description. I'd avoid giving in to your inner Pegasian desires. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons, MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Angel Ferox, Candyman, Crispy, Innercrest, Mike Carlotti, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amit Elefandi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blue Boy, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Tevs, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Dun Coro, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gustavo Secon, Isaac Jackson, Jay Linya, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jell Durado, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Erizo Hansen, Meds for Feds, Michael Oskovark, Miyuna Arashi, Moira Brownwolf, Nick Extreme 99, Nix Dolores, Pro Yugi Dad, Pro FB2, Sam Soon, Second, Shane Meadow Edits Pranga, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski? I'm trying here. Zach McKee, Bleh, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blast It, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and I, I'm, I'm gonna figure this out. I swear I will. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.